Welcome back. We'll talk about LeBron James in just a second, but first, Mets, White Sox, Jeff McNeil, great catch before going oh. to the net. Yes. Oh, look at that. What's worse here, a baseball into the stands or a human oh. body into the no, stands? No, 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 a baseball could have really hurt worse. somebody. And, yeah. by the way, see, the netting actually helped. There he doesn't land on those those hard plastic bleachers. I like Football that. is back. Broncos Falcons pregame. Julio Jones showing off the hops there. Beautiful catch. Oh, well, catch-ish. I don't think right. he got I control mean, that, with two feet. He just kind of, well, and he tipped it to himself. It's good catch. I mean, but look at that. You, the I mean, hold on, look. The is bar is this, sorry, high. This because the gloves are Chris so Carter's gooey not here, so I got to I gotta critique it. All right, to the actual game itself, Denver's Brett Rippin connecting with Jawan Winfrey for a spectacular game-winning touchdown. Jenna. What? You know how I know it's officially football season? Tell me. Because Atlanta plus two and a half loses <laughs> like that. <laughs> I mean, I mean, we are minutes into the season, and it's a double-tipped catch for me to lose my bet. I'm covering the whole game. <laughs> All right, Chargers Rams joint practice. Watch how Keenan Allen lays out to secure this one. He's I'll in your neck of the woods. Oh, there you go. Yep. He's I'll in win. your neck of the woods out west coast, Chris Broussard. He's one of the more, to me, underrated of the receivers when we I talk agree. about the best in the league. He's starting to get a little bit of love, but yeah, he is underrated. All right, to so the latest jab at LeBron James now. His former general manager, David Griffin, sat down with Sports Illustrated and opened up about his time with LeBron in Cleveland. Griffin said the pressure of building a championship contender around LeBron made him miserable. So said LeBron isn't as concerned about winning the way he used to be, to which LeBron chimed in on Twitter with this, all right, enough is enough. The throne has been played with too much, and I ain't for horseplay. Ether coming soon. <laughs> Chris Broussard, your reaction to how this all played out? I tell you what, if I'm a Lakers fan, I, I love that. Oh, yeah. If this is what it takes, and I think LeBron was coming out with a great season anyway. I mean, he always has a great season, but I think he was really coming with some heat this season. But now to see people doubting him the way they are, and especially a guy he has a good relationship with in David Griffin, a guy that they did something historic together in winning that championship in Cleveland in 2016 for several reasons. Uh, I think that's just going to light more of a fire under him. I don't agree. I give Griffin credit. He is a candid guy. I give him credit for being candid and honest. But I don't agree with the sentiment. One, to say LeBron, look, maybe if he's saying in Cleveland that once LeBron got them that title, he felt he didn't have as much to play for, I maybe could give you that just because now you've delivered Cleveland his first title in 52 years of any sport. However, he's still got plenty to play for. I mean, he's chasing Michael Jordan. Some people think he's past him, but many don't. And so he's chasing Michael Jordan. You also have guys in this era now beginning to win rings like you. Steph Curry's got three, like LeBron. Kevin Durant, Kawhi Leonard have two, like Le LeBron's got three. So he needs to win more rings just to even separate himself. You know he's a better player, but separate himself from some of these other superstars who are winning almost or just as much. And then the bottom line is, look, in 2017, they get to the finals. 2018, they get to the finals. Now, in 2017, I do think seeing Kevin Durant go to the Warriors could make you feel like, man, can we beat this team? But that didn't show up on the on the court for LeBron. No. In 2017, I mean, in 2017, LeBron James, after the point in his career where David Griffin said, He's no longer an animal about winning. The, that year, as defending champs, he leads the NBA in minutes per game and set career highs in assists per game and rebounds per game. And in the playoffs, averaged 33, 9, and 8. And if we remember, through the Eastern Conference, they went 12 and 1. Right. The Warriors swept everyone. They had one loss, a three-point loss to Boston, and that was it. The next year, when David Griffin is gone and LeBron is on the least talented team he had been on since 2008 or 2009 in Cleveland, he leads the NBA in games played and minutes played, sets new career highs in assists per game and rebounds per game, and in those playoffs, ups it 34-9-9 nine, nine, with 
two game winners. And if you're not animal about winning what game seven in the first round, 45, eight and seven in a must win game, game six and seven in the conference finals against Boston, 41, 13 and nine averages. And how about and, game one in the finals? And game one of the finals, 51, <laughs> nine and nine. So it never showed up in Cleveland. Now, you want to say last year, people say, oh, he went to L.A. because he's more focused on off-court endeavors. The Lakers right now are the second best odds to win the title, right? So, like, it seems like the move to L.A. has good championship, at least hopes there. I, I'm puzzled by these comments because, first of all, I want to say this. I really like David Griffin. I really respect David Griffin. And so does LeBron, seemingly. Well, at least, as of at least 24 hours ago. I mean, I, I can't speak for him now. They've had a good relationship. A really, a good enough relationship that Griff two weeks ago reached out to LeBron and asked him to tweet about David Griffin's wife's vineyard, and LeBron did it. I, I know, and I'm assume you do as well, from talking to people right around LeBron, they were shocked by this, caught totally off guard, and don't know where it came from. And when you mention Griff being candid, he absolutely is. But I've talked with David Griffin multiple times since he left the Cavs, and this has never been his messaging point. It's never been that he was, he's talked about pressure, but he's never said he was miserable. He's always talked about LeBron buying in and about how they had a good partnership. He's talked about being frustrated that he, that people thought LeBron was running the team and he didn't get credit that he was the one making those moves. But I don't know where these comments come from, and the idea that LeBron was less focused on winning, to me, there's no there's no reality to stem that from. Well, we should mention there were a number of things. This wasn't a sit down to just talk about LeBron. It was right. David Griffin's it was life, a David and Griffin's this, story, and where he's come to, and how he ended up where he is right now. I wonder how much of what he said they just pulled the spicy comments, and perhaps there wasn't enough context that was pulled along with it. We talked about how he said he was miserable when LeBron won there, but a lot of it was because he wasn't able to implement his own plan, and it was less about a knock on LeBron and more about you know imp impeding his path towards what David Griffin well, wanted. The context they put that the story was written in made it seem like exactly what you said, but that Griff would have almost been happier or been happier had LeBron not gone there and had he been able to build a team and, and fight, work through the journey of can we make the playoffs? Can we get to the second round? Can we become a conference contender? Can we win the East? All that. And th here's the thing, though. The goal of sports is to win. Period. Win it for the fans and win it for the players. It has nothing to do with the happiness of the general manager. With you playing fantasy basketball and having fun building a team. That's not what it's about. It's about winning. And the chances are great. As good as David Griffin is as a GM, that if LeBron doesn't go there, they lose. They never get really to a, become a good team. Pro maybe don't even make the playoffs ever. David Griffin gets fired. And then is it this hot GM candidate that he was before going to New Orleans and maybe doesn't have this job right now? I don't. And with respect to David Griffin, who I think is a very sharp basketball guy, I know he doesn't have this job right now. If you, what, what, the reason he had his pick of jobs, because New Orleans was a plum job in this regard. You, whoever took that job knew they were going to be able to trade Anthony Davis yep. and get that bounty. Now, they didn't know they were going to get Zion, but they knew they were going to have a good draft pick plus whatever they get for Anthony Davis. And David Griffin was able to kind of lay in wait. He had other GM opportunities that he didn't take because he was waiting for the best job for him. And I, I, wanna, I wish him well. I really do like like him and his story is an interesting one where they where he's fought through cancer yeah. he like I he, and he is a basketball lifer but this is there is a cottage industry of folks that will that are waiting for moments to try to attach themselves something to attack LeBron. LeBron got criticized for opening the public school because people all of a sudden found out public schools are paid for with tax yeah, dollars. Right. Who knew? He it's did. crazy invention. Like, he got attacked this week for how for he parents his kids. And so David Griffin, after two years in media and being a sharp guy, knows put, saying these things in any context is going to, again, put a target on the back that of the man who delivered him the greatest moment of his professional no career by an enormous margin. And it just seems, it seems so out of character 
for Griff that it surprises me. So what you said, Jenna, about was there a different, you know, were there other quotes that put this better in the better context that the writer didn't use? We don't know. I don't want to criticize or critique the writer like that. But if that's the case, Griff needs to come out publicly I'm and say this it. was my intention. You can't this just say it behind the scenes, sure. off the record and all that. You have to come out publicly and say And it. just quickly, how do you think LeBron responds? Will this be a thing where we wait for the season to start and you see it there, or are we going to hear more from him? I don't think you'll come... It, Will there be more cryptic tweets or Instagram posts? Possibly. But I think the bottom line is he's going to come out. This is good for the Lakers, I'm mm -hmm. telling you. Because he was getting questioned even before this. And I, I look, the challenge is there. Kawhi didn't go. He went to the Clippers right across the hall. I think this is all good for the Lakers, and LeBron will show it on the court. When's the next episode of The Shop? I wonder if Mav asks him about it, and that's oh. how we find out. Yeah, that could be good. All right, take a break. Coming up, let's talk some football. Cowboys stars all want big money, but do they all deserve it? That's next on First Things First.